there's a mic on built into it. Alright, we're in the same space belt that we've tried to find people out in the entire so we'll see more in another session. This is Frank for Sophie, and she's working on this Java and Python for a short of a decade, and he started with Python in 1999, and uh, got committee committer access in 2004, and he became the lead developer in 2006. Okay. Testing, 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 testing. Okay. <laughs> and now I'll try not to talk so loud because I'll make the thing ring a bit. Anyway, the important part to look at is the line DB equals DX to JDBC. 
this is how you get a, a database connection in a, uh, in Giant Barn. And you see that I've got the uh, I've got the JDBC colon MySQL. That's uh, that's exactly the way Java programmers call uh, spell the MySQL uh, URL, if you will. And that's going to be true with any database that you're trying to uh, access from from Giant Barn. You're going to want to use exactly what the JDBC literature says to uh, at, at, at how to format the uh, URL if you're using the raw DBA guide. Uh, I'm going to take the username and password and the name of the driver. And this is actually, you know, the, the driver has got a newer name. But, uh, so, anyway, so this is a simple do a select statement uh, and fetch everything from the rows, turn the rows kind of thing. And that's pretty much the, the, the most basic way that you get it. Uh, there are other more interesting ways to connect the data sources, and this is this is very JSON specific, I believe. I think that this uh, this spelling in the style is a complete JSONism. I haven't seen this sort of thing in Python. So, ConnectX is a way. It is is the thing that uh, Brian Zimmer came up with to connect the data sources. And in the JSON world, we use data sources all the time. If you're in a Tomcat setting or Web server or any other application server. Uh, it's the most common practice in, in any big business to, uh, to have this type of connection tooling because it's expensive to create and destroy all these connections all the time. If you've got if you've got high if you've got high activity, uh, then you want to have these uh, database connections already created and sitting in a pool. You grab the connection, you use it, you put it back in the pool, reinitialize it. And then that just makes things go a lot faster. And so here we have the uh, connect x method, and this is the uh, API. Uh, you, you pass in a, a dictionary with the various attributes of the database, data source connection uh, that we connect uh, via, via a Java data source. And that, that spelling of data source is a capital S because it's a Java API uh, object <coughs> class. Another way you can connect to connection tools is if you grab them from JNDI. And JNDI is Java's naming and directory interface. Uh, so uh, a lot of apps, or probably all app servers, have some way of putting connections into an object store and attaching and labeling them with a name so that you can just grab it with a name when you, when you start up so you don't have to be one particularly good reason to do that is so you don't have passwords and usernames running around in your code base. You can actually have that. Uh, that can stay on the admin side. They can figure out the usernames and passwords for the connection source. I'm sorry, the the uh, yeah the JNDI resource name, and then the programmers can can connect via a name. So uh, in some of these examples, I'm using really just one example. I'm using swing table to visualize database output. This is uh, this is just a, an example of using swing from Jython. And although that's not so, so uh, the important thing though is that you can pull uh, any any Java into you can use any Java directly. Java except swing dot table. These are Java libraries that you can just use directly from Jython. And it looks pretty much like you're using Python, uh, it translates very nicely. And this is just a simple, just just puts up a, puts up a table. <coughs> puts up a uh, table. Uh, let me run it. I've got that one. Let's demo it. So if I just run the icon, swing.py has that code in it, and it just sticks up a table with those uh, dummy names that I that I run today. So yeah, and now the do <coughs> basic VXJDC demo. I'll just show you. So the code is table.py. Is that big enough real space? Um, 
So here we have pretty much that. Oh, yeah. So here we have a, we're importing the system point, and then we grab the database connection, and I select name and full name from users, and that table already exists and has some data in it. And I just simply stick that into uh, the row data object. The row data object. Send it to the Java J table. Uh, put that in a J frame, and then set it to visible, and then that will uh, then it will show up. And while I'm at it, I probably ought to go. While I'm at it, I should go to my little prompt so you can look at Object relational mappers are uh, they so uh, ORMs come in handy when you feel like uh, you're, you're working in an application where your your developers are uh, fairly O oriented and if you feel like your for, for your particular app dealing with lots and lots of cross people feels like it's getting in the way ORMs provide a nice way to get to to get between tables and the uh, Object uh, and of late, there seem to be two, the two most popular styles of ORM are ORMs follow one of two patterns: either the active record pattern or the data mapper pattern. Uh, so, for example, Django uses uh, an active record style of ORM inside, and uh, SQL Alchemy is a is a ORM that does data mapping. Active record tends to be a little bit simpler because it's, uh, it's a one-to-one -one relationship between tables and objects, and it uh, tends to be very easy to read about your program and how it relates to the database. And just because of one-to-one -one mapping, it's like a lot simpler to, uh, to think about. The data mapper uh, is uh, puts the puts the mapping in between the database tables. And the object, so that you have to you, you need to explicitly show how how these tables map into a into an object space. And uh, DBAs tend to be a little happier with the data mapper approach because you can do real object entity relation decomposition separate from dealing with the programs that you're that you're writing. And uh, And so, whereas with the active record pattern, it's really the developers that are driving the design of the database. And so if you're in an environment where the databases are, are sit in the center and the applications are more center outside stuff, then uh, uh, it tends to be much more likely that you'll be able to use this data mapper style. So SQL Alchemy is a native type on ORM. Uh, based on data mapper, and it, it works very nicely, and the code is uh, pretty easy to read. I, I just say that because I've just been 
poking around in the slides, people often be trying to get it to work in Python and get it easy. And, uh, and so finally I've started to get things, actually it was relatively easy. The hard part is going to be uh, probably talking to Michael Bear and finding out exactly how he wants, uh, finding out exactly how he wants it to look when I, you know, what is it going to expect? Because right now what I've got is I'm totally unacceptable. I've hacked the MySQL uh, object to, to work in Jaipur instead, which is you know, a non-starter for actually submitting to the SQL project. Um, so, so here I
Right. Right. This is probably one of those places where maybe JSON is a happier place to be than JSON. <laughs> but as far as porting, I think there was a uh, there was some there was some wrapper where it tried to tried to hide all the or you know, tried to hide the DB API differences, but I, I don't know enough about it. Yes. It's really hard. <laughs> At least it's really hard to try to create tables and whatnot. Well, and the, it's not actually it's really easy if you go and do things their way. So you set XML table mapping and you just and you just do some uh, you're right, I have to back up because what I was trying to do was really hard. I was trying to uh, make Python be like a programmatic mapper so you could replace the XML and I should say that part. Oh, um, Trying to replace the XML with Python is very hard. Actually using Python is pretty easy. It works pretty well. I've, I've, done, I've done that. And I know that was in this talk, but everybody put it in the Sorry. Anybody else? No problem.